Hello, guys. Um, come on in, guys. Don't worry about it. Just, just come through. Um, hello, guys. It's super nice to be here and super nice to have you guys coming to watch. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, me, first of all. I'm Enric. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Lens Studio, which is a piece of software that Snapchat released for free about a year and a half ago and allows you to create AR and then distribute that AR at, f at, a, at a massive scale. Um, so I'll just go through the basic sort of step-by-steps. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the work that I do and, and the studio that I run. I'll tell you a little bit about what Lens Studio is, and then I'm going to go through a whole bunch of different examples of what it can do and what it has done, the work that I personally see and that I think is interesting. I've got some quick demo videos. I was going to do a live video, but um, it'll be easier to just jump into a quick video and show you what the software actually looks like on the inside and, and how easily it is to go from putting something into it and then pushing it out. And then finally, uh, sorry, and then finally, I have a couple of thoughts on where all of that is going, where Lens Studio as a piece of software is taking us and where other layers in the augmented reality storytelling, augmented reality publishing and creation space is taking us. So I have a few thoughts on what I sort of am interested in in the future and what I see happening as part of uh, the official Lens Creator program. So Lens Studio creates essentially augmented reality 3D layers or 2D layers and you can put those layers into the real world around you and take them with you. You publish them onto Snapchat's app. Uh, you can uh, see for yourself that the kind of numbers that people are uh, engaging with uh, augmented reality on Snapchat are fairly staggering. Uh, it is an incredible number of people that you have instant access to. And so it's a great piece of software to test out ideas. It's a great platform for you to get feedback from people. It has a real range of different values as, in my case, a storytelling, Im immersive storytelling creator. Um, so my background is, I, I, I'm, I'm a director, I've been working as a director in the immersive space for over 10 years. I'm very interested in how currently right now, and again, I'm going to talk about that a bit more later, currently right now, things are changing fairly radically, fairly significantly, because there is a whole different range of layers coming together. And I'm very interested in how we can make that change happen um, and we can make that a, a change for good. I'm an official lens creator um, and a creative partner. So Snapchat runs the official lens creators, which is a bunch of crazy uh, enthusiasts that picked up Lens Studio and started, pu and started put, um, making stuff in it and, and pushing it out onto the platform. And uh, Snapchat's extreme, been extremely good at fostering a community around that software and building a sense that that community has a, a place to communicate and has a way to help each other and then also provide a support mechanism for technical issues and challenges that you may find as you work on it and, um, and for you to be able to uh, ultimately reach the people that are out there using the app every day. As a creative partner, you also uh, have uh, some knowledge of what publishing on Snapchat is like, how you can work with ads within the ad network of Snapchat. So there's a few different layers there that are super interesting. My studio, Studio ANRK, is based on my sort of 10 years in this industry and, and I explore new forms of storytelling with a team of people kind of all over the world. We work in a fully remote way. And uh, I've got a few slides here about some of the companies that I've worked with personally over the last years and, and some of the press and, and awards that the work that I've done with an incredible range of talented people uh, have gained. Um, I worked with The Guardian on uh, Sea Prayer, it's a tilt brush based story about um, a father and son bond and the war in Syria and saying goodbye on a journey over the, Medi over the Mediterranean. Um, I've done a, the screen here is a little bit difficult to see, it's quite a dark slide, but a, a volumetric VR experience about what it is like to be a crime scene uh, forensic scientist, the truth versus the fiction. And you explore that in terms of a game. Uh, Autism is a VR film, 360 film, about what it is like to be autistic, what the triggers are for you to become stressed and how neurotypical people can become more aware of those triggers and, and, then, and therefore create understanding uh, around that. And then one final example, Rock is a VR uh, 360 film combining game elements, 
narrated by Simon Callow in the UK, Shakespearean actor, about an ancient flying creature. Um, oh, pardon. EDF Energy 360 uh, film about being on the inside of a nuclear uh, reactor. No human or camera has ever been there. It was a very interesting process to try to figure out what that might look like. And then a couple of older projects, most Northern Place, Northern uh, Greenland web documentary going back seven, eight years now. But the transmedia space and the, the, the journalism space is a consistent theme for me. And then even before that, Attraction. Attraction was a very special project. First interactive web-based anime. Worked with an incredible team of people um, in, uh, in Tokyo at Studio 4C with the director, with the director Koji Morimoto. Um, we created an Attraction. It was a, a, VR, it was an, a, a web-based manga that encourages kids to think twice about smoking, essentially. It's sponsored by the French government. So back to the topic at hand. Lens Studio. Um, it allows you to put these 3D objects into the world. The software itself is really very approachable. Um, it also allows you to put your creations, whether they are um, when when they are face-based. So if it's a face filter, uh, on a whole range of other platforms such as Google Hangouts and Twitch. So as part of a Twitch stream here on the right, you can see that specific filters. Uh, apply to your face can be can be used. And and there's a few reasons why I think that Lens Studio is powerful. I think that firstly creating AR in your daily life and is powerful as a creator, but what's more interesting is to see people use AR every single day. To see people out there who may not make it at all become conditioned for that layer of either storytelling or just fun, or in many cases, something much more serious, a message to become a part of the way that they communicate uh, in, in terms of a social network. So the, the use of daily AR is already happening, and it's a part of what Lens Studio can provide. And then, obviously, it creates incredible new forms of creative expression, which I think is super fascinating to see. It's invisible. Um, it's everywhere. You don't, if you want to talk about something like graffiti, you need to erase it later if it's an issue, if it's in a private property, for example. So you can express without that limit. It has a huge audience, and the distribution is a passive part of how creators in the AR space struggle ultimately to get their message out. This is really interesting, because if you are a tool builder, then you might have more access and knowledge of how to build the structure to get something published that works on the variety of phones that people may have. The distribution layer, the, the, the sending it out into the ether is part of Lens Studio, and, and Lens Studio solves it for you. Um, I am seeing on the official Lens Creator group, the daily chat, some of the most innovative uh, technology builders that I've come across. You know, I work from the work you can see, I don't just work on social AR, I work on a whole range of different projects. People are building stuff in Lens Studio on a weekly or a monthly basis that the software wasn't designed for and that is really fairly incredible. And it is incredible because if you're testing something and you're pushing it out and you're getting feedback, as an OLC or as a, as a creator, as anybody, you have instant responses from people. So it's a perfect tool for A-B testing. Um, the official Lens creators are a group of artists, uh, of disruptors in terms of ideas, in terms of memes, uh, they have a lot of fun every day, all day. They're creating all kinds of stuff. Um, really, uh, really a whole range. And, and what you can see from this image, which is just a few snapshots of people's work, what's immediately obvious and what AR as a, a creative storytelling platform doesn't necessarily easily have is an instant unique style. So there are styles here on the screen that are recognizable. If you'd see that style expressed in a different image somewhere, you'd instantly recognize, oh yeah, I saw that image. Well, that style here, for example, top right, Ali Jackson's work, is unique in that space. So there's a really powerful uh, system for creative expression, a real diversity in styles already in, uh, built into the software. You guys check for me that this doesn't have any audio. I think this might have audio. We'll have other slides coming up later with audio, but if, if it doesn't, then... 
Just let, just have have a look while I'm while I continue. Um, this is Rhonda, one of the official lens creators. She's awesome. Uh, I did a talk with her a few months ago. She called Lens Studio the ultimate creative tool. You instantly think of aug augmented reality as a 3D platform, but 2D layers added to either items in the world or to your face and tracked in, in place as you move and talk are just as expressive and just as powerful and diverse in terms of the layers. She's an illustrator and graphic designer, so from her perspective, that, that tool works really, really well. Uh, all official lens creators uh, have creator profiles, which are really valuable. You can see that there, and so you can, you can scroll through uh, all of the lenses you've published. You can get fairly detailed, granular statistics around how those uh, lenses performed, what statistics um, uh, they have, so in terms of the user base, in terms of the age range, in terms of where in the world people are engaging with your work, there's a fairly granular amount of detail available. The stats here just uh, are about on the right hand for the broad, for my broad profile, but each, each, each lens itself has its own set of statistics. And it allows you to learn about who is engaging and then make conclusions around why, and if things are working or not, if you want to change the, something about your lens or not. And this feedback is updated in, 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 in daily, so you get fairly quick responses. The official lens creator community has their own Snapchat chat channels. As you can see, it's a constant, all-day, uh, unbelievable, creative, and sometimes overwhelming dialogue of ideas and references and also tech help. If I'm stuck with something, it'll probably be the first place I go, and if I really can't solve it, then I'll try the Lens Studio team at Snapchat, but the official lens creators really band together and create a pretty strong community. Lens Fest is an annual celebration of all the official lens creators and everybody comes together and if, if they can in Los Angeles and, uh, and kind of do a hackathon and talk about the things that they're interested in and what they're excited about. So a few lenses and, and a quick glimpse into the software itself. When you first open Lens Studio, this is exactly what you'll see. You'll get uh, essentially a series of templates. Every kind of lens that you can make has a fully built, fully available, and fully customizable version already in the, in the software. So you're beginning the process of creating with an example of exactly how it should be built. And in fact, you can probably, in many cases, start by going in and finding a layer and then replacing that layer with your own asset, something you've downloaded or something you've made, just to experiment and test it out. Every type of lens, has a fully built project available for you to have a look at and learn from and play with. Four types of lenses, lenses that go on your face, lenses that go in the world, lenses that react to an image, so an image marker such as uh, posters, for example, or business cards, and landmark lenses. Um, personally, I work a lot with 3D. That is, again, not necessarily the limit that you may have. You can work in 2D, you can work with a range of different techniques and ideas. Some people purely work in pure code. Uh, it's JavaScript in Lens Studio. Um, but source, great sources, among many other things, are, are Giphy. Uh, Sketchfab is a great source if you're downloading free models. Uh, you just have to check polygon count, file size. It's four megabytes, 6,000 tries. Um, or Unity Asset Store, where assets are already available for you to purchase or sometimes download for free. And they're usually already more optimized. So optimizing in terms of 3D work would be the bigger challenge. The challenge in Lens Studio is mostly how you want it to be perfect and how you want it to be implemented just right. You need to start with an asset in the 3D space. That, that takes a little bit more work. And when you really dig deeper and, and go further than those first steps, you can actually do some really powerful work with lighting effects and glows and responsiveness and reflections and grading layers that have blend modes, and so they are reactive to you, environment maps that create beautifully reflective, clean surfaces and make it feel as though something has um, the world around it reflected in it so that when you move, that sense of parallax exists. So at the very base level, you don't need too much to get started, but actually you can push it quite a long way further. And again, with code, you can start building all kinds of interactive elements. There's another really important detail, which is key, is you can send data out of a lens or pull data into a lens from an external source. 
And so you're starting to reference databases if you're building something functional. Or if you're talking more about files that are hosted externally, there are some limits there and it's important to dive deeper. But there is a basic mechanism there where you can, you can, you can connect with the outside world that Lens is not a self-contained item. So I've got a whole range of examples. I didn't really quite know uh, how many of these to show before it starts to become a bit like stars in your eyes. I'll just go through a few of them and then you guys can start rioting if you feel like this is starting to get too much. Firstly, a uh, very beautiful gradient hair changing demo. You can already see, actually I'll just jump back. Oh. You can already see that the way that the, the masking of the hair, which is happening obviously automatically, the way that's happening is, is, is really fairly impressive if you know computer vision. This is a sound reactive lens. This, this file definitely has audio, so we, we, we're going to need to put audio up because I've got many and many other slides with sound coming up later. can hear it, but very faintly. Anyway, this is sound reactive lens. You can do basic sound commands <laughs> and build in sound recognition so that an audio a word that you say, for example, triggers an effect. I'll continue for now, but it'd be great to get sound up, work, up and working, guys. I don't know if the clicker needs to be somewhere or... <laughs> I don't have any slide control, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, go in. Good idea. I'm, uh, it's hard to pin it down. I mean, it's hundreds of people, but let's say I would guess a third are coders, are developers. I would say the majority are 3D designers or perhaps 2D designers. And then I think there's a range of people that are creatives who are curious and start hacking away at stuff and, and get somewhere. And I would put myself in that last category. I can do 2D creation, 3D creation on a simple level, but you start to get familiar with what the tools are and how they work because you have the examples, you can get a long way. So I, I would say it's about a third. The, 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 the people that do coding, like all people as part of the community who communicate almost every single day, are super open to helping. There's a Discord channel, so you, you put something up there, you come back six hours later, somebody will have downloaded it and checked it out and solved it. It's really interesting. It's a really, really fast, really collaborative little brain of multiple people, basically. I would say about a third. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Thank you. I, I don't know if the, where the thing is that's referencing it, so I'll just stand here and figure out if that works. So yeah, so um, this was one of the early lenses I made, which is a beautiful bubble around your head. This was a message from my perspective on social anxiety being in large people, so if you're in that bubble, you'll only hear all the sounds around you in a really distant and washed out place, and it's a silly, fun idea, but I thought it was a nice reflection of how it feels. Um, Mondrian-inspired face lens that allows you to become a painting. Classic cinema, I have, I, I have, a, lot of <laughs> I have a lot of inspirations that are going way back in history. You'll see that further down as well. Um, this is a really fun random experiment that came out very different um, it was going to be a scary lens. I was starting out making a, like a moss monster. Ended up with a really happy statement about you know being in, in being one with nature. I think, uh, and I think that's always really fun when something comes out that you didn't expect. This is a, a project that where I really tried to push technically the limits. It's it's inspired by the game Death Stranding, um, and so I built the the arm that the characters in the game trailer have over their shoulder. It's an AI that looks with 
them at the world and, and I guess analyzes that world. I don't know enough about the game's story. But I was really inspired by that and so we built, you know, we built the basic arm in 3D. I had a friend help me out and then I put it into Lens Studio, layering it behind you and layering it in front of you so you have that sense of proper depth and perspective. And then there are two different face-based commands that trigger two different animations which can either happen separately or at the same time. So the flapping and the rotating animation. So this is only rotating, I think. There's also a flapping animation, which is when it's like making a message to the person wearing it in the, in the trailer of the game. So there are two different animations triggered by different face, or different face uh, expressions. It's funny, this is an airport and I'm sitting there going like this, oh, testing it out. Oh, it's not working, I don't know why. And then person across from me with a glass of wine who cannot see my screen is looking at me like, what is that guy doing? Um, and it was really great because this project was published and then, you know, sort of really traveled and the team that makes the game, Death Stranding, saw it and they, they, you know, you know, they responded to it on Twitter and this guy who's a kind of cosplay guy, he goes to, to you know, game conventions dressed up as characters. He, he went nuts with it. He was posting video after video of himself and he brought it as part of his costume to some of the events that he went to. So it's really rewarding. This is really the best part of the process. You build something, however simple or complex, you put it out there. And funny enough, the simpler stuff generally does better. Reaches more people, is more easy to respond to. But if it's out there and people start using it and sending you videos back, that's incredibly rewarding. And it's usually instant, six hours, 12 hours, maybe a day and you're starting to see people use your work. I, you know, the wor process of making lenses is like rapid fire hackathon style experiments, but you get real user feedback in the millions at virtually no cost. So if you're testing ideas, if you're building products, but anything that I might be commissioned to do outside of this software, at this point, I'd start probably here, to be honest. It's the simplest way to get something onto everybody's phone. The whole team can play with it. And if you want to, if it's not under NDA, you can publish it. And if you own all the rights to all the assets, you publish it and you get feedback. So an incredible tool in that sense. This is a um, project that came out of a tweet I saw. This is a sketch of a dodo from um, uh, 1638. And so I just played a bit in 3D and gave it some volume and shape and, and then helped, asked some help for someone to animate it. And so we kind of brought to life the last known sketch of a dodo, arguably, and we put it back, you know, back together, and you can take it out into the world. I saw this, this is the tweet that I saw, and, and I just thought, wow, that is something. 1638, someone sat there and sketched that, and it's alive today. So I was really inspired by that, and I, I generally love history, and so bringing that into the work that I do is always really fun. You can see, see a little, uh, sorry, see a little, I think that should animate. Little animation in Blender there to, to bring it to life. Fortnite. Peaky Blinders. Everywhere I look, there's something, right? Like whatever I watch on TV or something, I'm like, ooh, ooh, I could I could do a thing with the with the mustache. It's a bit exhausting sometimes. I see like three or four things an hour. These are actually in the carousel, these are not mine, but, but these are great. The texturing on this hair is incredible. I'm so jealous sometimes of the work that the team puts out. Um, I'm gonna start skipping through these because there's, there's quite a bunch and it starts to get repetitive. I think you guys start to get the idea of how diverse it is. I saw this the other day in Amsterdam and I was immediately inspired. I thought, that's great as a poster, it would be 10 times better if you could wear it on your face, any one of those. A whale flying through the canals in Los Angeles, why not? The largest, possibly the largest AR lens studio lens, could be. This is very, very clever. You'll have seen stuff like this already out there, I think, but really, really, really clever work with image markers. And, and, and the, the, the tracking is all happening in the software. You don't have to do any work to create that. You just have to create the asset. There's a lot of lenses also that are much more environmental. This is an example of that. That are really just about creating a beautiful artwork, depending on where you are in the world. To be different in every single direction you could point your phone at in every part of the world. 
This is a lens which recreates an earthquake. Not sure, depending on where you are, how fun that is, but it's really impressively made. And this is really something. Going into a portal, animated graphic novel, animated comic book portal. You know, there's just so many different directions you can take this in. This dude I saw on YouTube, but I, I, yeah, he looks stunning with that lens and then changes. I'll keep going forward for now. Uh, Laura Baku, there's a few really awesome creators that, that have standout work and that have really created a style. I mentioned Ali Jackson earlier. Laura Baku is another. She creates these unbelievable creatures uh, and animals with this sort of glass texture. And her work in Limb Studio is also really something to look for. I, I like the idea of, of giving people an immersive experience or something that is magical or something that is not of the normal everyday. What I like most uh, about Lens Studio is how easy I can reach thousands of users. With AR, you can change the world in front of you, literally. Could we just do like a 3D pitch and make it work? And we did it. <laughs> yeah, I just love to see all the people use my work. It's an uh, amazing feel. I think that's really important with experimenting with lenses because it doesn't have to be the perfect photo, it's just anything. Be creative, do your things, nothing is impossible, you know? Laura Baku's work was uh, featured uh, when um, landmarks came out. So there were four different buildings, or I think it was yeah, four or five different buildings in the world that had landmarkers, which is a building tracked into space. And Laura's work was plastered here over the Buckingham Palace building in London. Incredible work. A few more examples that are brand related because a lot of brands are working inside of this medium as well. Either they have a product story or they have a larger brand story. And there's awesome work being done. This is Fisherman Labs in New York who built this awesome. Uh, lens for uh, for for the NBA. This is Paper Triangles out in Los Angeles. Who worked with Fanta to create an image marker lens on ta on the bottle. Billie Eilish. This came out just recently. This is uh, one of the Snap Originals. So, uh, 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 the, the new the new launch programs on Snap, on Snap Originals, and um, so it's a it's a, an image marker lens that works on a billboard. The army is initiating a lockdown of the city. I know you're de desperate and afraid. We're doing our best to save you and everyone caught inside. But if even one single drop of contaminated blood finds its way out of the quarantine zone, we are all dead. So that, that would work on that particular billboard, but it would really work wherever that image, that, that exact image is available, that would work. If it was on your computer, it would work as well. I think there was also a face lens that came with that. And previous work by the same team, working for Snap Originals, um, Van Life, beautiful photogrammetry work of props that are part of the storyline that you can walk around in. Uh, volumetric work, I, I think volumetric is also really fascinating. It's beginning uh, to become viable to put fully volumetric captures, which we're seeing over here today as well, into lenses. And so that means suddenly you have a real uh, version of either yourself or of somebody who's a part of a show, um, a celebrity, an influencer, and they're a part of a Snapchat lens, essentially. The, the storyline of your of your product or of your, of your show then continues from there. Snap and Jaunt had a, a shared volumetric capture set up uh, at an event earlier this year, which within about five minutes puts you yourself fully volumetrically scanned in motion, five, about five seconds, uh, puts you yourself onto Snapchat in about five, five minutes. Awesome work for Game of Thrones with, again, image markers here based on a real prop, um, as well as posters that animate this was at South by Southwest. And this lens reached, I believe, a billion people. I mean, an incredible amount of people. And it's a really smart idea. It's a small team in Australia. I'm sorry, their name escapes me at the moment. But it's a 360 photo combined with a portal 
made in 3D. And so peeking into an image that is fully realistic in this way, as simple as this is in terms of its build, really very powerful, allows you to travel in a, in a really realistic way to somewhere very different. And they built those for all kinds of different companies. I worked recently with, um, uh, with Millie Bobby Brown on a, a, a very practical tool rather than something more entertaining, which I think was an interesting process. It's essentially a makeup lens. So we looked at the products that they um, or her team are working on and, and how we could build those in the most natural and the most believable way into a filter uh, experience that sits onto your face. And so we used Lens Len Len Studio to start building out that effect. Um, Initial concepts were about how we could place things onto your face and how we could allow you to choose that. So as part of the lens, we'd have maybe buttons that track around or maybe we have a menu. And as well, on the right-hand side, ways for you, once you've played around with something, to take data from what you've chosen, the product data, the actual colors of a particular product, to take that out with you when you're finished. So it was an interesting challenge, going from really fun, entertaining stuff where you're thinking of green monsters and then and ends up being flowers on your face, to thinking much more practically about the basics of UI design and accessibility uh, in terms of UX and, and how information can be displayed when fundamentally, to begin with, your face is the primary element on the screen. So taking it away from the entertainment side, I think there's a huge amount of opportunity as well, just in the, in the tool-based work. And this is a a piece of work that can easily and constantly be updated. The colors are all procedural, so you can add in any number of them. That doesn't really affect file size. There's about f eight different products in here. I think we're looking now at expanding that further. Other challenges that I had, as I speak to different companies and brands who approach me for work or who might be interested in something uh, to do with Lens Studio is really crazy and, 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 and interesting challenge is, can I send money with a lens, is an actual question I've had from, from, from people. I wouldn't know where to begin, I think the answer is probably no, but an interesting thing to think about, people are beginning to come with briefs that are actually way beyond what Lens Studio itself generally does, and, and are asking, well, what else can this tool do? It's really interesting. Uh, can I schedule a message to be sent later? There are interesting discussions to be had about how far you could push the code. It's just JavaScript code, you can do a huge amount. Uh, or looking at issues that related to, to, to mental health. How can we build a tool that allows people to, to either diagnose or, or become a, more aware of these challenges, similar to what I was doing at The Guardian? Really interesting conversations with people that I'm working with now. So I was going to show you guys a couple of real li um, uh, live things on online studio, but the cables aren't quite right. What I will say, and what I think I might do afterwards, is if anybody wants to have a look at my screen, and, and, and have me show them which, the sec which parts of Lens Studio are what and how it works. I'm happy to do that. We can find some time after my talk. But in essence, the basic click and drag approach is the fundamental element within Lens Studio. And so if you have a 3D asset or a 2D asset and you bring it into the software, positioning it, moving it around, placing it becomes a matter of click and drag. Um, and if you want to, you can change the parameters instead, but it's a very straightforward process. And you have a very interesting um, 3D view on the left, but most importantly on the right-hand side there, you see a constantly updated real-time view of what you're building. And so every change you make is instantly, is instantly visible to you, either on a, a range of preset videos with a whole range of different skin tones and male-female models, or on your own face. So while you're building, you're instantly seeing what you're building, Every change of every parameter, every bit of code that you add, if it works, obviously, is instantly visible there. Um, I, I'm going to just jump forward with this. Hi. This was a, a little video, but Lens Studio has a YouTube channel. They have a website with extensive documentation. So you can easily say for yourself, all right, what I really would like is to build something on top of the Eiffel Tower. Well, then there's a video on the bottom right there, in the middle right there, for the landmarker template that walks you through the process of how to do that, allows you to watch somebody doing it in Lens Studio, and then you can go and, and figure out or just match it yourself. 
come and chat with me after and if you want to have a look and I'll show you a couple of projects. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the deeper storylines that are emerging as Lens Studio is being pushed forward by the creators that use it every day. So stories improve um, memory and recall, I think, as a, as, a, as a basic principle of storytelling. Like, why is that powerful? M memory and recall are improved with storytelling. Uh, it improves understanding, builds context and empathy around particular issues. For me, these are interesting subjects, and those are the things that I explore with my sort of longer-term projects. And finally, encourages people to take action with regard to issues that are important, such as maybe climate change. One project that I'm working on is climate change related. And it's a project called Drift, and it's really, fo it's really focused on, p on, on puzzling and storytelling. And you meet a, a climate change refugee from the future, and she has sent back in time puzzles through uh, Snapchat lenses. And those puzzles are objects that are initially locked and closed, but you need to open them up. And when you do, you start getting messages from her in these glitchy broadcasts where she starts talking about what life is like for her 40 years later from today and how extreme weather and extreme climate change has changed the city that she lives in. So it's one example of a mechanic where, firstly, advanced interaction is a, is a basic part of the project. This object here takes three different layers to unlock. There are three different stories embedded inside of that shape. You first have to unlock that shape, it then opens up, and then you have to unlock another shape, and then ultimately what you get, if you go forward, there's a few other different, uh, different puzzles, is you get her broadcast from the future. Trying to figure out what we can wrap into a single shape, essentially. Now we're working forward, looking at shading, uh, at, at, at shaders and seeing how we can push the, the puzzle mechanics forward much more and start releasing five or six more in the coming months. It's, it, it's not an app, it's, it's, it's Drift, is the project name. My hair is really annoyingly in the way, guys, sorry. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Um, Gray Matter AR is another project that I saw by uh, Karen uh, van der Borgt, who I believe it may be Dutch because her name suggested, and I, saw, I heard her voiceover, and it sounds very Dutch, and it's an incredible project with 50 different Snapchat lenses, all unique, all different, where 10 elders share their wisdom. And then you see them and they've all built a range of different lenses and they are nuts. And beautiful and incredible. Meet and engage with the oldest influencers of our lifetime, our seniors. For as long as humans have been humans, the knowledge of older people was key to the survival of early societies. It's easy to forget that it's only in the past 100 years or so that people have turned to anyone other or anything other like an app to solve life's problems. I believe these 10 grey foxes you see here are still a unique source of life advice for younger people. And we need to tap in the source of wisdom more than we are currently doing, both for young people's sake and that of our elders. He's old, so he naturally he doesn't know what he's talking about, but I think I know what I'm talking about. I always say I may be 89, but I think my mind is still pretty good. Grey Matter AR makes clever use of smartphone technology and Lens Studio a developer tool released by Snapchat, a social platform with a youthful user base. The software lets creators implement effects or lenses which respond to gestures, facial expressions and environments. Those reverberations are going to hit. The 50 unique grey ma lenses let a generation of digital natives step into the rich source of life experiences of the pre-app generation, whose members are mostly invisible and ignored on digital platforms. I think nature is what will make you age well. Somehow nature comes back and renews you. This project is the portable version of a magic mirror, which lets you explore your most existential thoughts. Using the built-in camera of your device, but only in selfie mode, you pick the theme which speaks to you the most, represented as a keyword in the Snapcode logo. The face and voice of an elderly person will intersect and interact with yours, presenting you with an open-ended reflection. The only way is not to fit. By conquering all those difficulties, you really become stronger. 
and you can even become another person. I want to build bridges between generations and communities, showing that the human experience is the same, regardless of the technological era you live in. Really beautiful work. Um, and really super beautifully done because it's the collage style that is really very unusual in, in AR kind of lenses and, and in, in terms of more broadly the face filter scene, I, I, I found it really touching. UCLA did a beautiful uh, Snapchat lens on homelessness, which is all photogrammetry. Hi, my name is Jennifer. I'm going to show you how homeless people live here in Echo Park. Um, and we're going to look around at my tent today. So welcome. And then I have a couple of other projects in production which deal with similar, uh, su uh, with, with similar subjects, which are a little bit more deeper, longer-term stories. A convict story is a collaboration with the British Library, looking at a woman who was convicted of a crime and, and essentially sailed to Australia, which at that point was a penal colony, in 1792. And we've pieced together data from her journey and her life um, based on machine learning algorithms that search through newspaper archives, digital archives. And that's coming, we're working on that at the moment. Uh, you'll be able to understand things like what the boat journey was like from the perspective of the captain. You'll be able to understand what the trial was like based on the data that we have available from the Old Bailey in London. A whole range of different perspectives where the, ba the, where, where, where the basic components are the data. And I'm working on a project that's just about to come out um, Bosch, the uh, beautiful painting, um, uh, or let's say the most, uh, the world's most incredible character designer, maybe still today, and turning those some, some of those characters into um, characters you can meet through Lin Studio. Figuring out how would a unicorn, which is also a dolphin, move? Maybe not like that, but but that was just a test. Um, so much more coming. I've got a few quick notes on the future and how this is all going to intersect into something much bigger and, and, and we're almost there. So depth and machine learning is one of the very first layers that we're beginning to see integrated now into software such as Lens Studio and to, into more broadly the tools that we have on our phone. Every single element that is around us in the natural world and the world that we have built has depth data, it has geometry. And tracking and scanning that geometry and keeping hold of it is something that a lot of different companies are, are, are trying to innovate on. It's one of the fundamental stories, I think, that you'll hear at events like this one. How do we understand depth? This is a Lens Studio project by Brandon, which already has that very basic capability built into it. So triggering based on depth, triggering based on distance from the camera. And then more broadly, worldwide persistent depth. As we walk and as we move in the world around us, if depth is known, AR objects can be behind something or can be there next time we go there. Hi, I'm Key Pan, computer vision engineer at Snap. My team's job in London is to make the Snapchat camera smarter by enabling it to see and recognize the world around it, just like the human eye. But let me take a step back. For hundreds of years, the human eye has been drawn to the buildings around us, and our fascination with them is pretty evident. Nowadays, we take more photos of these buildings than ever before, and it can be hard to find a fresh perspective. So we started thinking, how can we empower people to look at these monuments in new ways? The short answer is, we took public snaps that people had submitted to our stories and used them to reconstruct 3D models of these buildings. Through the process, we gained the ability to recognize the landmarks with pinpoint precision and understand their geometry, enabling amazing AR experiences that interact with the buildings themselves. We then put these models into Lens Studio so anyone could create AR for, say, the Eiffel Tower or Buckingham Palace. To really kick this off in style, we sent the feature to some of our very own official lens creators and gave them the freedom to bring their home city landmarks to life using their unique creative vision. Lenses turn the world into a living museum. To know that my lens is placed on Buckingham Palace is an amazing thing. 
Obviously, I, I come from London, so I'm super happy to know that I've done something that people can enjoy when they come and visit. I think the Queen, I, I really hope she would like it now. <laughs> Now, anyone can add a fresh perspective to their world with landmarkers in Lens Studio. We can't wait to see what you create. So when suddenly you have depth information and you have that da data placed you know, with GPS at a specific place, whether it's something beautiful or artistic or something much more practical, it remains there or it has functionality specific to that, that location. And it also has things like occlusion, which you can see here in this other Game of Thrones Snapchat lens, where it lands on this on the roof, and the roof, which is the um, which is a building in New York, I forget the name now, um, and it's it's occluded. The, the building is in front of the the 3D object. Small detail, but fundamental to the realism that augmented reality will soon have. This is Ines Alpha's beautiful AR lens in Paris, by the way. More about her in a second. So that brings us with this idea that, that Magic Leap calls it the multiverse. I won't go into that too much. There's going to probably be plenty of talks around this kind of topic. Um, but, but maybe more simply put, persistent AR. Items that have a memory in a particular location, in a particular place, that have a memory of you interacting with them or that are there all the time, but only visible to some people, not to everybody. 6D, uh, I was going to sh you know, show you, but it's worth having a look at. I won't have time now. But 6D AI, Abound Labs up in Scotland, they're all innovating in this space of, of creating the depth data that can be persistently available to people. And what that brings us to is the next steps, a time of convergence, which is happening at the moment. Um, so the real and the virtual are merging. And this is really much more about us as, pers as a personality, I think. And I think that's super interesting because it's supported by some of this technology, the depth layer that we talked about, cloud rendering where everything is happening not on your device, which is why your phone can do such incredible things, can track such unbelievable complex elements into the world around us effortlessly. Um, and this persistent layer. Um, it essentially creates city scale AR. It, it's always on. It's always there if you want it. It's not necessarily only. It's not necessarily always visible, but it's there if you want it at all times. And it has memory. It remembers your interaction from yesterday. A lens you replay today um, over different moments will be always the same. Maybe tomorrow it'll remember that you were there yesterday. That depth layer, which is a, a, a connect-based scan of a, an office building, but that depth layer is slowly building up, and and as people are using software like the stuff that 6D AI are putting out, collectively we are building that picture. Where at some point, just stickers start to become permanently animated. It can be visible to some people, it can be visible to all people. Increasingly, our presence is going to be split more and more between our real selves and our virtual selves. So if we think about our presence online or the messages that we send out using a Snapchat lens, as of a second version of ourselves, as another version of who we are in the real world or in the natural world, non-digital world, then those two different layers, which is true already for me, and I'll talk a bit more about why I feel that way, and those two layers become interconnected. Our digital selves by Dragster, who is sitting right here in the front row, uh, is a beautiful example of that, of people that have, for a whole range of different reasons, uh, over time uh, felt that their second or their digital version is more, is, more, is more them, more real for them than their natural version. And that could be a, a disability such as this example here. It's a beautiful example of how what we think of as our primary self isn't necessarily uh, our primary self anymore. We finally met about an hour ago. <laughs> um, so this server-side powers, this device is looking at you are part of that layer as well. We have depth and we have server-side rendering, but we also have the camera, which was what Keeb was already referring to in the story about, um, about, lam about la la landmarks. This is a very simple example, but tapping on a shoe in, in Snapchat will bring up, if it's, the right, if it's the right shoe and the right lighting conditions, will bring up the Amazon page where you can buy that shoe. That's a camera. It's just one example of thousands, but that's a camera understanding things, not just taking light in, but understanding the world. So all of these things are different things, and they're very different technologies, and they're all being explored in this building and many others on different layers, but they're coming together in this sort of next step where AR becomes a part of reality that is today, 
AR is a part of, is a permanent part of your reality. It is your reality. The expression that you have of a particular Snapchat lens that may feel more representative of how you are in one setting is you, too. That's you, and that may be your primary you. And then ultimately, the question then becomes, no one has the same reality, which is really fascinating. Spectacles is a part of that, um, and more broadly, Spectacles, which have AR already integrated into it, in a two-step process. But of course, many other devices are playing in that same space. And so the moment that we are having this device here rather than in our hands, and the world is moving around us with these different layers attached to it, you start to get all kinds of interesting extra layers. And our personalities, our, our personalities become a really flexible thing. This is an awesome official lens creator. Imagine meeting that on the way to work in the morning. This is a really amazing OLC. You, you definitely should look up. Um, but the question then becomes, what if no one looks the same to everyone anymore? And this is a super interesting and super exciting concept. It creates a new sense of what's human, and it creates a new sense of our, of our powers as humans. Should I finish up quite soon? Okay, no worries. So superpowers, this is a completely different level now, but this is a wonderful example of virtual tales, of having a body part that humans naturally don't have, and learning how to control it. Your brain is incredibly adaptive and flexible. Bjork has been exploring this stuff for years, of course, much, much more on the artistic side. Beautiful work. Ines Alpha, who is another official lens creator you really should look up and, and check her work out, is a 3D makeup artist who explores similar themes and ideas of what's the human body. Or Fred, Fred Avon, a good friend of mine who is in Stockholm, who creates these beautiful skins. It's hard to see with this light, but beautiful skins for, uh, to be used in games. It's incredible armor. Um, time is a bit up, but but both you know Micah at Magic Leap and and the team um, at Fable working on idea of avatars being the next operating system. I know that this is a lot of different layers being side being developed side by side, but all of this comes together in a singular shape over the next decade. BBX, another project. Take a take a moment to look this up. It's incredible work in Auckland, New Zealand of essentially. Does that video work? A human, digital human, growing inside of a computer and learning through repetitive behavior and visual interaction with its creator. Worth having a look at. So apply all of that to the real world out there. All day, if you're going out later, thinking about these themes, which, you know, some of which are really far in the future and some of which are, are beginning to emerge today. But all of these things are becoming a part of a reality that is fascinating and different, where we can re-edit what we see, and the world that is around us, and we can make that edit available to some if we want to, but not to everybody. Rubik's Cube from reality. This is a machine learning experiment, you may have seen this online, where the phone camera tries to edit out cars if it sees them in real time. It's a terrible example because it's a first experiment, but it's the beginning of something big where your phone is doing all these big complex things, which we think of as massively separate companies and massively separate interesting um, uh, so it, it, in, in, in industries, but are actually a part of what you're carrying with you. And when that comes into your face, it's the next level. Disappear Lens, by the way, of Ginny the Wu, another unbelievable talent official lens creator, does similar things. So ultimately, my point is, what we describe as real is our conscious illusion of a continuous stream of synchronized sensory input and processing. My good friend Yates said that. And, and, and these days it could be in any form. This is in Sansar. This is a board meeting where everybody is, looks like a shark. <laughs> and then finally, VR chat where people are cats and they have just as much fun and that's okay. It stretches your imagination. The world around us is going to fundamentally change to, due to all of these immersive technologies. We have 
a, an overwhelming amount of dystopian future visions, but actually, if we ask ourselves what future do we want, we can start to innovate on that today using Lens Studio. I love that the official lens creators are doing that on a daily basis and would encourage you to join us. Download the program, join us on Discord. Reddit community is also very strong. Come and have some fun with us. And come and see me after if you want to have a look at Lens Studio in the flesh. Thank you, guys.